Hello, my name is Farshid, and in this video, I'm trying to explain what it takes to get into the cybersecurity field. We try to bring up the common questions and we try to give them practical answers. Okay, it starts from this question Where should I start? Do I need a certificate? This is the first thing that it might cross your mind that I should get a certificate, I should get certified, and then I can move on and apply for a job in cybersecurity. There are tremendous amount of certificates out there. For example, CH, like Certified Ethical Hacking, or CISSP, CCSP, like Cisco Certified Security Professional, OSCP, one of my favorite ones actually, OSCP, and uh, Security Plus from CompTIA and many more but the question is do you need to pass these certificates to get a job in cybersecurity or not to be honest these certificates will give you a lot of information and you can build a great cv with them but to get a job in cybersecurity you don't need any of them because the employers eventually look at your skill sets you can earn your skill sets via practice. There are other ways and trust me, there are much better ways that you can prove your capabilities to your potential employer. But then what? How can I start? To answer this question, we have to answer another question. Do you have already an experience in IT and computing or not? Because there are a lot of skills overlap. For example, if you are a network engineer, or a software developer. You know, it makes a huge difference. Let me explain in example what I exactly mean from that. Let's go with the use case one. Assuming you are a regular IT guy or a network engineer, you do have a great amount of experience in IT. So there are common titles, for example, IT administrator, network administrator, network engineer, you name it. The second you have this kind of job title, it means you have a skill set already. For example, you do know switching, you do know routing, firewalling, you have hands-on experience with Linux and so on. And this is already a great foundation for you, right? That's why I said you are half done because this part is the foundation upon which you can add new skills in cybersecurity and afterwards you can apply for a position in cybersecurity field. The skills that you have to add are vulnerability assessment, Kali Linux tools, Python scripting, security standards like Mitra Attack, OSINT, OWASP, Top 10 and so on. And after that, uh, of course, you do have the possibility to apply for an ethical hacking slash penetration testing job. And ethical hacking and slash penetration testing is just one role in cybersecurity. You do have roles such as security analyst, cybersecurity architect, or cybersecurity manager, or for example, auditor. They are people who uh, typically go to companies and audit the status of their security based on specific standards, security standards that are defined for that kind of business. In this case, I try to draw a pathway from a person who is a network engineer, for example, or an IT administrator, and the skill set of typical network engineers like switching, routing, firewalling, and so on. Who would like to change his job to ethical hacking slash penetration testing? The other example would be, okay, I am new in computing and IT and I have zero experience. What should I do now? Well, in this case, you don't have to go through the same path that I showed previously. You don't have to go become a network engineer or IT administrator and then shift to cybersecurity. You do have the possibility to jump straight into cybersecurity field, but you do need a foundation, right? My recommendation is to start with computer basics. You can get that skill right from YouTube, for example. That's free. Of course, you're free to go for official trainings and all that, but I would not recommend wasting time in that matter. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube. Uh, for example, let me show you one. For example, if you just type A plus 
uh, tutorial for beginners, right? This is just an example. I'm just typing it and these videos are coming for me. Uh, I have no association to any of them. As you see, there are like three hours or four hours course on A+. And in A+, you will learn the equipments in IT. You will learn about components and hardware components of computers. You will see how computers are built up physically and how they tick. And of course, much more than this. You will build a grounding about computer basic. And then my second advice would be to go for Cisco networking basic. Again, you can go for CCNA, but it would take time. If your goal is a career in cybersecurity, you don't need to go through whole Cisco networking world and then get into cybersecurity career. All you need is getting to know how network components are interconnected. How do they work in different layers of networking, right? Again, for that matter, you can go on with free tutorials and uh, you can build up a virtual lab in your home if you have the possibility. There are great simulation labs. For example, you can go to GNS3 and check the GNS3 on YouTube, uh, learn how you can install this guy on your computer and how you can uh, built of a small simulated network and uh, for example you can have a simulated switch simulated router and some pcs you know you can start connecting them and you can add to routers you will be able to practice the networking knowledge right on your laptop without the need of buying a switch or router or or anything like that third requirement would be windows services basic I recommend Windows because it's much simpler to follow. It's it has a great GUI and like graphical user interface and you can explore different services that you will need to know when you are doing ethical hacking slash penetration testing. And after collecting these skill sets, you have the foundation skills and you can move on for the required skills that you have to add on top of these three items that I just explained like Linux command line. This is like vital for a person who is doing ethical hacking and penetration testing. I do recommend to get this part serious. That's why I didn't write basics. Take this part serious, right? And while you are learning Linux command line world, try to install Kali Linux or Parrot OS, which is again another Linux distributions. You can use them interchangeably. I mean, there is no preference. I personally prefer Parrot, but install that and then try to learn Linux command line on that operating system. So you get accustomed with the environment first. This operating system, either Kali or Parrot, will be your friend for the rest of your career as an ethical hacker. The second item here, like Kali slash Parrot Linux tools, will take a huge amount of time from you because these tools are I would say endless. There are a lot. And to learn them, I would recommend you to take a serious training. Of course, you can go on YouTube and you can go to YouTube and, for example, type uh, Kali Linux tutorial. And there are some courses already there, but many of them that are above like two hours, three hours, 10 hours, they are like crash courses. We also have a crash course there. Uh, it's called ethical hacking crash course using Parrot OS. This one is also a crash course that we have already uploaded there a few days ago. Of course, I would recommend you to check this out as well. There are good information in it and you can get a taste of ethical hacking world because there uh, we will show how, how tools inside Parrot OS work, right? Uh, you will learn about hacking databases, you will learn about burp suite and so on. But again, th these kind of uh, YouTube videos are, I would call them crash course. And my recommendation to you is going to one of these online training. My favorite one is Udemy. I am already an instructor there too, but that's not the only one. There are a lot like Skillshare and just Google and you'll find it here. Take a serious course about ethical hacking. And, and again, we do have a course here as well, 
this one for example is the course that we have created it's about 40 hours i will put its link under the description of this video just go through uh, some of them which are above like plus minus 20 hours just go through the lectures and uh, there are always previews there for example if for example if you click on the uh, promotion video there are there are some other preview videos just go through some of them and and you will see if the course is for you or not anyways if uh, purchasing a course here is not due to any reason is not possible for you uh, you still have the option to go through these crash courses and after you learn Parato OS slash Kali Linux and all the tools on them uh, you can start going to hack the box this one is a great playground where you can practically hack there are virtual machines specifically designed with specific vulnerabilities that you can break in with permission everything is fine you will learn with permission that you can hack in and on youtube again you will find a lot of videos where they teach you how you can pick a machine here like virtual machine and hack it all the walkthroughs are on YouTube as well. And of course, again, on the serious courses on Udemy. And as such, you can, for example, apply for a, for example, junior cybersecurity function as ethical hacker slash penetration tester. Another common question that uh, I always get is if coding is required, right? This is a common question. People ask this question a lot. I would like to get into the cybersecurity field. Do I need to learn coding? The answer would be, it depends. You know, if you would like to be an ethical hacker slash penetration tester or any kind of technical role in cybersecurity world, I would highly recommend going for the Python language and learn it. But if you would like to be an auditor, for example, security auditor or a cybersecurity manager and anything which is not directly hands on, of course, you can skip this part. I would even recommend skipping this part, although it would be a plus, but it it would take a lot of time from you where you can devote that time to a skill which is more valuable for your position. But again, if the role is a technical one, it happens a lot that you have, a, for example, you have a foothold on a system you have already hacked you have to do a, for example, a repetitive task on the uh, target machine. If it's a Linux machine, the Python is already installed and you can automate it. If it's a Windows machine, PowerShell is installed. You can automate a task for your purposes. This was just an example that I just made up. Uh, there are a lot of use cases and knowing a language like Python, PowerShell, Bash, of course, I would emphasize again on Python, will pull you out of the category of a script kitty to a professional one the second you know how to code how to translate your requirements into the code language this is the moment that you are a professional in this field otherwise you will always be a person who play with tools that are already made and you are just restricted to them this was a very short introduction to pathway to a cybersecurity career if you like this video, don't forget to thumb up and subscribe for our channel. We try to update this channel with new videos uh, specifically about ethical hacking and penetration testing. Okay, stay tuned. Take care. Bye.